In this video, we're going to deal with the formatting of spreadsheets. So this is just a bunch of data here related to elements. So you can see on the left side here, these are the elements in the periodic table. Now, again, if I use the uh, browser command, command plus, I can enlarge the font size here. It just makes it a little bit easier for you as the reader to see what's going on. So I'm zooming in again, command minus will do the same. So if you're on a PC, you'd use just the control rather than the command. Now, one of the key things in terms of a, a database is that you have uh, headers. So for example, across the top here, this is a header. Now, if I, if I just sort a column, like let's say I sort this column here, and I say search from A to Z, you'll notice that um, it's going to go uh, alphabetically, which looks fine because CR comes before uh, CU. But if I take another column over here, where notice name is, appears later than oxygen, I mean, than fluorine, for example, then if I uh, sort this A to Z, everything gets messed up and that header is gone. So Command Z or Control C to undo things. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to freeze a row. So you can do this by view, freeze, and then you can select as many rows as you want to, depending upon which row you're in. I'm on row one. Detects that, so I'm going to say I'm going to freeze row one, and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say view, freeze, <coughs> column A. So now the advantage here is that now if I try to do a sort, okay, just like I did before, and we'll just enlarge that again so you can see the idea. Um, if I do a right click here and I say I'd like to sort A to Z, the title name does not change its location because that's a header. So freezing uh, the appropriate number of rows and columns is critical to turning a spreadsheet into a database. Now, uh, there's simple formatting features here. If I click on the, um, uh, on the cell in the upper left-hand corner, it highlights everything, which means it's going to format everything on this table. So what we can do here is we can say, okay, let's go ahead and do a format and let's do alternate colors. So I'll choose alternate colors and I can choose various different color schemes. And this is going to make it easier for students to track um, a particular cell. And uh, the idea is that you can get to a particular cell based upon not only its, its headers, in other words, its uh, row and column numbers, but also based upon the color. So, um, and you can even choose custom styles and so forth. In there. So you can make it appear any way you want to. Uh, and we're just going to leave it like this. Now, this looks pretty good, except for the fact that the header, um, we have black on a dark blue. Well, if I want to affect the change in the formatting of the entire row, I'll click on row one here, and then I'm going to choose the text color. I'll choose white. And now we can see we have a, a much better contrast. But the problem is, is we can't see all of the titles. So, for example, crystal structure, we... We see here in the um, data entry cell what is actually in that cell. But when you look at it this way, you can't see it. So you could do a couple things. You can click on this uh, row header, row one, and you can reduce the font size. I can reduce it down to seven. But that's not always a very good way to go because, um, you know, that, that sometimes becomes too small to actually be readable. So let's go back to 10. You can change the position um, or the orientation of those headers. So if I click on the ellipsis here and say what I'd like to do is I'd like to turn the text in row one. Again, row one is selected. Then I can click on this and I'll say, okay, let's put it vertically. And now you can see it's vertical, but it's still not showing well there. So let's go ahead and just drag this column. So if I take the, the, the cursor and I, I you see the arrow there, then I can... Um, divide that. And so now I can start to read those there. Or you might say, well, that's a little bit too much space. Why don't I just uh, um, make a little bit more conservative of the space? I'll do it at an angle. And now you can see the titles for each of those columns. But uh, as you're going through this, you'll also notice that uh, some of the data is not visible. So for example, under group, there's a lot of stuff there and we can't tell exactly what's in there. So if I if I highlight a cell and then I just click right here, um, it's going to um, automatically size for that column. So let's go ahead and choose two of them here so you can see the idea. And 
So if I click on it now, you'll notice it detected the width of a particular item here. And then it automatically sized the column so that everything fits. There's no extra space here. If you look all the way down here, these face-centered cubic structures and so forth take up the, the largest amount of distance. Let's just illustrate that again. So I'm going to highlight these cells. So I'm highlighting all across here. And I'll say, you know, I'd like to size them automatically. So if I just choose a divider like right here and I double click, you'll notice that everything that was highlighted now is resized. So as I scroll across here, you'll notice that everything in those sections are resized. Sometimes you want to do that. Sometimes you don't. Um, so if I scroll across over here to the far right, there's a lot of data in these cells here. Well, that's like too much. It's like, okay, I can't see, um, you know, I'm, I'm scrolling all the way across just to read the data because the data entry in those cells is just too, too great. So, um, and you can see here that in a, in a cell here that something's cut off. So you can notice here, like um, all of this portion here does not appear here. It says it exists in the Earth's crust in concentrations. And then, oh, sure enough, the, the data is there. It's just hidden. So how can we make this appear? Well, first of all, um, you may not to need to change the parameters here. If all you're interested is what the contents is, I can divide, I, I can make this, uh, the data entry cell here larger. And now you can see, oh, now I can see the entire contents of that cell. So again, what you're doing is you're simply just going here and dividing or making it larger. So you're basically giving a little more real estate. Well, that's, that's nice, but that's also going to take up some space on your screen, maybe some space you don't have. So, and as you're scrolling down here, um, you might find that, that there is some sections here that uh, um, really are, you know, just that there's too much that's off the screen. So like if I'm looking at column AL, you notice that it's bleeding here into the next column. In other words, this text just continues on. So if I click on this and then use the format feature over here um, for text wrapping, I'm going to clip it. Now notice when I clip it, the data is still there. Okay. Again, notice that if I click on this first one here, you'll see the data is there. Again, I can enlarge this and so I can see it. So there, there's the data, but it's clipped. Well, at least it doesn't run into the next cell. And the reason that that's important is like, let's say I do have some data here. And let's say that there's some, you know, some data of some significance. And so now when I'm, when I'm looking at this, um, I don't want, uh, if I was to, to click on this and say, you know what, I'll just like to have it um, continue into the next cell as long as the next cell is empty. And that's going to be this one right here. That's going to be an overflow. Now watch, everything overflows except this one here. So that's because there's already data in that cell. So if I click down on here, like on row 81, I start typing, let's say chromium. Okay. Now when I do that, Notice that that layer there is, this is actually sulfur. So how, how, how can I have chromium over here? But if I delete that, then the contents of the preceding cell will overflow into it. And you can see it does now. You can see that it, it overflows into that cell. So you use whatever makes the most sense for you. Um, that uh, you, you, one of the ones that a lot of people like to use is basically the word wrap. So if I, there's a lot of data in this column, but I don't want it to bleed and I don't want it to be clipped. In other words, I don't want it to overflow into the next column and I don't want it to be clipped off. So the way I can do this is I can right click here and um, that I can look at more column actions right here. And so I can see some stuff there, but what I'm really interested in here is a formatting. So I'm going to use the ellipsis and then I'm going to use not um, text wrapping here, and I'm going to choose this one, which is the wrap. Now watch what happens. Watch these cells here. Notice it disappears, but then these also opened up. So these uh, rows opened up. Now, again, that's, that's helpful in the sense that as I look at the, the uh, spreadsheet, I can see all of the contents in the cell. I mean, nothing's hidden, so it's, there's no confusion. Um, if I want to do this for the entire document, 
or I should say the entire uh, worksheet. This is a worksheet. The document is a whole spreadsheet which includes four tabs or four worksheets. If I click up here, and then I say, you know what, I want it to word wrap around the entire, every cell to word wrap. I would do the same thing. I would just click up here and I'd go like this. And now every cell everywhere, you'll notice as I scroll back over here, we're going to see that um, even in the names now, the names are word wrapped like phosphorus, polonium, and so forth. Once again, this column is too narrow to show the whole thing. But if I, you know, click on that and then just double click on the, the column, I can get it to automatically size so we can see the stuff. I can also simply drag and drop these headers to where they want. So you can size a column by just clicking on the divider and narrow it or enlarge it by dragging it the other way. You can do the same thing for a row. So for example, if I want more space for polonium, I would just drag it down. If I want more space for polonium and plutonium, I do the shift click, which selects both of those. And now if I drag it down, now it'll, it'll resize polonium and plutonium simultaneously. So uh, again, a couple things that are important in terms of selection. If I hold down a row here and then I hold down the shift like on 81, it'll select everything between 79 and 81. The shift says, okay, select everything between the beginning click and the end click. Um, the other option is if I click on, seven, let's say, 78, and I want 81, but nothing in between, I can press the Command or Control key. And so now, like in this case here, if I format, let's say I want to format the color of the text, notice it formatted just those two rows because um, I had selected those. Now, let me just show that in a little bit broader uh, perspective. So let's say I wanted to highlight these cells. Well, I can do so because I've just held down the, the command key while selecting. So now if I choose a text color, you can see that those are all now changing in response to the fact that it remains selected. All right. So again, that's, that's for when you have non-contiguous cells and you want them to be, um, you know, uh, highlighted appropriately. So, um, so again, we can change the size of the rows, the columns, and so forth. The, if I'm trying to change an entire uh, structure, like of a column, I always need to select the column, or I need to select the row. And again, to do multiple, if it's contiguous, hold down the shift. If it is not contiguous, then just hold down the command or the control. And then what we can do is we can apply whatever parameters and so forth you want to, like that, which would apply just to those those ones which are selected. <laughs> so you, you can select whatever cells you want to for whatever operation you want to do it at whatever time you want to do. Now, let's say we wanted to make the headers there a little bit bolder. Well, again, just typical formatting features here. I can bold them. I can italicize them. There's all sorts of features you can do with it. You can also change the color of the text. And, you know, typical word processing stuff. Um, that just by selecting the appropriate modifiers. You want to make sure your, your spreadsheets or databases are uh, easy to read. Uh, you want to make sure that it's easy for students to find the information or enter information in the appropriate cells. So let's say that I wanted to highlight a specific um, cell, like let's say sodium. We're dealing with uh, um, you know, the element sodium here. I can click on sodium and I could just highlight that particular cell by doing a grid around it. So I'll do a borders here. And these are the different bordering options. And, and again, if you select multiple ones, then it, it'll allow you to, to do the horizontal and vertical no matter where they are in the selection. Here, I've just selected a single one. So I want a border. And I'm just going to choose a double outline border. And um, now I could also choose a heavier line. And so you can see that now that cell there, sodium, is standing out. So that is a, another feature you can do to be able to highlight specific items. So in terms of the structuring of your table, um, again, you can make it, uh, you know, however you want to in terms of the appearance. And so what you want to do is you want to practice with all of these formatting features to make it as, as, as readable and as, as usable as possible. 
Now, oftentimes in a spreadsheet, uh, students scroll off screen, like, you know, right over here, I scroll to the right. Well, what's all this stuff? You may notice that oftentimes what I'll do is I'll highlight those columns and I'll just say, ah, right click, and I'm going to um, delete them. So I'll just go ahead and say delete those columns. Now, there's nothing which isn't being used. In other words, every column is usable. Again, here the information is going off screen, so I'd right click. I'll go up here and I'll say I'd like that to word wrap. And now we can see that this will actually word wrap within that. So if I was to narrow that column, it'll actually all appear there in, that, in, that, um, in the appropriate row. All right, so um, I can do the same thing at the bottom of the spreadsheet. If I want to get rid of some rows, like right here, and we don't have a thousand elements, you know, there's, or if I scroll back up here to the final entry here, which is um, 112, I'm just going to click on 113, and I'm going to, I'm going to drag this all the way to the bottom, and I'm going to click, shift click on thousand, it highlights all those rows, right click and just say delete. And so now the table has just the information that I'm interested in. And it's uh, not going to you know, have a lot of stuff that's unnecessary for uh, our purposes right here. So this gives you an idea of just some simple um, formatting features that you will have on your, uh, on your spreadsheets. There's many more features you can use as well. So for example, let's say you wanted to merge some cells. Now this spreadsheet here or database doesn't have really a, a need to merge cells because everything is in distinct rows and columns. But sometimes when you're setting up a table data table, you want a header over everything. So let's say I wanted to put something above row one. I'll right click and I'll say insert row above. So now I have a row above this. And let's say I wanted to, to say, okay, like some specific features, like let's say I wanted to highlight uh, these four items here. And I want to, um, I'll just change the color of them so you can see what I'm dealing with right here. So now this is, there's four cells, but let's say I wanted to merge those. Well, I can use this feature right here. I can say uh, merge, in this case, horizontally. And now there's a single cell. Now what that's primarily useful for is, let's say I wanted a title like properties, okay? Let's say this is something which was going to distribute over all of those columns. So I'll make it a little bit larger so you can get the idea. And then if I center it, okay, so you can see, oh, but now what just happened there? The data was distributed over those four, um, but uh, um, it really, we wanted to keep it in just one of those, uh, one combined cell. So now, because those cells are merged, if I just, if I type in, you know, something like the properties of the known elements right here, now you'll notice that if I expand those here, that now it's actually taking up the whole space available to it. In other words, it's treating it like a header like you would on just a regular table. And so I can, you know, I can narrow this down and now that's going to distribute over those four. Now that's not the greatest title for what I'm doing right here, but you can, you can see like if you're making a data table for your students to be able to format it so that there are you know, distributive properties, like in this case, this is something that, that distributes over all four of those columns, as well as specific ones like crystal structure, atomic weight, and so forth. So be careful, though, and I don't particularly like merging cells. It's more of a feature for when you're printing, but it can cause a lot of problems in terms of when you are um, sorting and so forth because of the, uh, it doesn't know exactly which column, I mean, <laughs> you may not know which exact column the data is actually in. So you use the, the um, um, merge feature with caution. So let's say you wanted to add some images to your table. Um, right now I don't have a column which is appropriate, so I'm just going to click on here and say, uh, right click and say insert a column to the left and I'll just put here images because these are going to be images of that particular cell, so of the data. So let's say I want to put sodium. Um, I'm going to uh, click on it and say insert. Um, in this case, I, I want to put an image in there. So it's insert an image and it's going to be in the cell. So it's going to size to the cell rather than insert it over it. So if I click on this, let's just go do a Google image search right here and say I wanted to look for sodium element. Okay. 
And so I can see, oh, okay, here's an elemental sodium. That's kind of what it looks like. And now you'll notice that it's going to size specifically for that cell. Let's just do the same thing for potassium. So I'll say insert a image. And so I'll just go down here and say insert image into the cell. And I'll put this from Google Images and I'll just put there lithium. And I'm just going to put their element. Okay, so now I can see uh, the lithium element. It's also going to be kind of a grayish substance there. So now I can see that now I have those two pictures and they're going to be sized for the category. So like, let's say I enlarge this. Let's say I make the one larger for potassium. Or if I make it larger here, you can see that by just dragging in the, uh, the divider there, you can see that it's going to resize based upon what's allowed, um, you know, by its aspect ratio. It won't change its aspect ratio. In other words, it's horizontal to vertical dimensions. Now you can also um, input um, things over a cell. So like, for example, if I say insert an image and I say over cells, and let's say I put in there vanadium. So, so let's say I put in vanadium and I insert that. Now you can see the difference right here is that that now is free floating over the cell. It's not inserted into the cell. So you have to use with caution because then people have to move data back and forth. So I mean, it, it works, particularly if you need larger images, ones that don't fit into your cells. Like if I had an image that I wanted to appear to everything here. Notice now that that image though it, um, is is configurable independently of this. So for example, let's say I take these three columns and I narrow them. I've highlighted all three of those rows and now I drag them like that. You can see here that that didn't change the, the image. And so it's going to be, um, it would be helpful um, if you've already got the rest of the placements and you kind of know where you want it to be. So that'll be another, you know, kind of formatting uh, feature. Again, the best thing to do is just to practice with all these formatting features. And once you do, I think you'll find that there's just a lot of things you can do with them. Um, and it's a lot of it is just kind of typical word process stuff. If you look up at this column here, you'll realize, oh, yeah, I can, you know, can do these various things. Like, let's say I wanted to delete americium here. I can just click on that and say, okay, I'd like to, you know, um, put a line through it. That's just a font feature. In other words, I can click that on and off. And um, again, try other features like notes. Like for example, if I wanted to say a note on curium here, I could say insert. In this case, I can scroll down and say I'd like a note. Now comments are different from notes. A comment is going to appear over on the right side. And it's something that is generally an editing feature. So if I'll say, um, uh, who discovered this, okay. And so if I click on the comment, that comment there, if I click on it, oh, there it is. Now, if that's a correction, you know, or just a comment we need to look at, then they can just click on the, the check. It's also here is that I can, I can link to that comment and, you know, there's a lot of, you know, in other words, if I take that there and I click on get a link to the comment, then if I um, move it in the browser, I can, I can select, you know, another tab and I can bring that up. Um, a note is another feature. It's similar, but if I say insert a note, the note is more like uh, information that you'd want to have kind of permanently inserted there. So, for example, if I want to have information specifically related to phosphorus and so forth, I, I, I would type that here, and then you would you would see a little black item here, say, um, and you know whatever. You'd see there it's going to appear as a black one, and you click over, you'll see that the text, and that text can be quite extensive. So a note can have a lot of value and can be edited, a lot of content, I should say, and can be edited anytime you want it. So for example, if I click on there, it's going to open up, and I can just paste in a large amount of text. And if I want the the it all to appear, um, you know, to the viewer, I can enlarge it here. And so now, if I scroll over, you'll see that you can see all of the contents in there. So you could put a substantial amount of content there. 